What's going on everybody? I'm Gold Gas. This episode is about how to service the Ariston Evo condensing range. If you enjoy, drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Push that bell notification button as well. If you don't do that, you might miss out on some uh, new videos that drop. Maybe some new promotions and new competitions. So it's worth doing. Do your visuals, all your basics, your clearances and stuff. Here she is. Actually not a bad boiler, I actually don't mind servicing these. Check flu termination. Pull off the bottom panel and then undo the two screws at the bottom there. Isolate the appliance, electrically, the gas, fly and return if it's not the highest point and open the drain off with your hose attached into your bucket. Check and pump up the vessel if necessary. The vessel pre-charge will either be on the vessel or in the manufacturer's instructions. There are three internal filters on this one. I'm going to go from right to left, removing the clips, removing the nut that holds the PRV one in, in place, and removing them and giving them a clean up. Remember to have everything isolated under the boiler. You are still gonna have a little bit of water in those sections, so just have a container underneath ready to catch it, or your wet back, or your aqua back, whatever you wanna call it. You can see the filters are working here. Give them a rinse under the tap. And I will do a screenshot as well of the filters on the manual. Disconnect the electrode leads, any cables that are in the way. Undo the screws on the burner arm connect to the fan undo the four nuts connecting that to the heat exchanger and then you can remove that burner arm assembly Now's the time for your brushes. I've got my drill brush here, the soft brushes, a chisel. Also, if you want to use a solution, if it's really bad, you can use that as well, get that spray in there. Got my pressurized sprayer here with a solution in there. I'm gonna spray that on those hard bits as well and leave that on there for a little bit longer and then I'll get the drill brush again on that and then hopefully that will come up nicely. Got my little mini metal brush and cleaning up the electrodes so they can sense properly. 
And then also you want to check the dimensions, make sure the distance between them is as per MIs. Check all the seals. When you remove something, always need to check slash replace that seal. Check it after with a mirror or your analyzer. Get your torch out. Got the uni light one here. Great make. Just gonna shine it on all the seals, make sure it's made a good seal on there. And also what I like to do is run the torch around the case, all four edges, make sure I can't see daylight on the inside. Um, if it does, then obviously it's not room sealed. Remove the condensate trap, give that a clean out, twist and pull on this. Really good design on this one, Ariston. Actually, hats off to you. You pull it off, there's no excess water in there, so you never get a spill, which is brilliant. Clean it, fill it, put it back in reverse order. Shut the drain off if you haven't already, and then open up the isolators underneath. And then you can start filling it back up. Now that we've done the vessel pre-charge, I like to do it up to one and a half. Now you need to bleed the main heat exchanger. What I do is just put my hose over the little mini hose on this model and then I can just unwind that one into that and it just bleeds it straight into the bucket where I've got water in anyway. That way just saves swapping hoses, swapping buckets and just minimalizes mess. So I bleed that till the air stops and then close it back up. Make sure the AAV cap is open. And then check for leaks where we've removed parts for the fillers. Run your mirror around the electrodes and the burner where it connects to the heat exchanger make sure it's not leaking any POCs check the two o-rings on the analyzer test point now we're going to put it in service mode or high fire low fire if you don't know how to do this I'll put a link above to the video to show you how to do it couple of different types of gas valves on this one. Same principle, one's just the hex key type, the other is a flathead, and then you wanna just adjust minimum and maximum. Keep going back and forth, make sure they're adjusted correctly. On this one, it's got the minimum, which is the larger of the adjusters. You want a four mil hex key in there, and it's clockwise to increase, and obviously the opposite to decrease. And then the smaller one on the top right there is a two and a half mil hex key, and that's the other way around. So it's clockwise is decrease, anti-clockwise increase. Same on the other gas valve, um, but with a flat head. And I'll do uh, some screenshots of those gas valves. Remember to check your MIs for the particular output and uh, the readings you should be getting.
Cheers for watching. If you've enjoyed, you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. It'd be much appreciated. If you add me on social media, on Instagram or Twitter, then you can find some competitions, promotions, and some plumbing disasters as well. That does it for this video. Thanks for watching.